It would have been great to be in Norway this week for another visit to Sholden and the surrounding area. Although according to the weather forecast it looks like we might have had a few rainy days if we'd been there. Our theme for this year's Discipleship Week centres on the character of God. And today we're thinking about God being love. As you know, some of the most well-known passages and verses in the Bible speak about love. For example, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. Or, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now we know how important love is because of all the songs and stories and poems and films that have been made or written about love. And we know that love takes many forms, for example parental love, brotherly love, sacrificial love, romantic love. It wouldn't take long for any one of us to come up with a list of people or places or things that we love. And yet, whatever age we are, we've only just begun to scratch the surface. We know that there's a lot more to know and experience about love and there are still questions to explore in order to understand more deeply or completely. What is love? What does love do? What is the goal of love? What difference does love make? One of the Apostle Paul's most powerful prayers was for people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge. The title that Steve has given to today's meditation is Immeasurable, and that's a very fitting description of God's love. It is without limits. It is uncontainable, unstoppable. To say that God is love is much more than just describing God as loving, even though that is a totally true and accurate description. It was John the disciple whom Jesus loved, who wrote that God is love. And without doubt, what that means is worth thinking about. Most of the time, if we're honest with ourselves, we're not thinking about God. Our focus is often elsewhere. Our attention is on other things. More often than not, we're probably thinking about ourselves and what we're doing or what we'd like to be doing. So having a week like this or a moment like this where we're focusing our attention on God and are thinking about him and what he is like, is really a great opportunity. It can and should make a difference to our day, our plans, our hopes and desires, our decisions, our motivation. Knowing who God is makes a difference, I think, to who we are, how we behave and the way we live. So let's spend a minute or two thinking about this statement, God is love and what it reveals to us about God himself. The only passage in the Bible where we find this statement is in, is in John's first letter, chapter 4, where it's written twice. Let me read some of what John wrote. Let us love one another, for love comes from God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us, he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We know and rely on the love God has for us. We love because he first loved us. So here we have, in one short passage, an explanation of, some, of six of the most fundamental truths about love. We have the origin of love, the demonstration of love, the definition of love, the consequence of love, the experience of love, and the understanding of love. According to John, the origin of love is that love comes from God. The way that God demonstrated his love was by sending his son into the world. The definition of love is not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. The consequence of this love is that we should love one another. We experience this love through knowing that we are loved by God and relying on this love, depending on it. 
And our understanding of this love is that we love because God first loved us. Love is vitally important for life. Without love there is no life. And God is behind all of this, whether we realise it or not. God's love is truly great, beyond understanding and yet real and something that we benefit from day by day, moment by moment. God's love is constant and consequential. We should love at every opportunity. Love is about giving freely, imitating and being inspired by the one who loved us first and foremost. God is love and God is great and his love is greater than we've begun to imagine. So let us try to keep in mind that God is love and that we are loved by God. Then we can learn to live a life of love so that God's love, compassion and grace might fill our lives to the praise of his glory. <laughs> so Norway is uh, an amazing, beautiful place uh, with lots of uh, great people and you should come to Discipleship Week because uh, you'll learn a lot and you have a lot of time for God. That's great. Norway is a really fantastic country. It's so beautiful. I've been taken away by the beauty of the mountains and I think everyone should come and experience this week in Norway. Uh, you get to meet lots of other people. I uh, have very good conversations and some good teaching and then just space to process things going on in your life and just take time out with God. So yeah, come. Thank <laughs> you.